With a speech entitled, Right to be Right. With a speech entitled, Right to be Right, please welcome Ola Aralepo. genuinely believe that they were born with the right to always be right. And they're called customers. <laughs> How do I know this? I'll tell you. Thanks for asking. Until recently, I was working for London Underground as a customer service assistant at Holland Park Station. Now, to put things in perspective, let me tell you a little bit about the customers who walk through the station. They live and work next door to the likes of Simon Cowell, Richard Branson, in short, anyone who's either making it or faking it. <laughs> and they are genuinely convinced that they were born with the right to be right. They believe customer service is pronounced customer <laughs> servitude. <laughs> And this is how they expect to be greeted. Welcome. <laughs> Whatever you're about to say next, you are right. <laughs> I'm here for you to use and abuse as you choose. <laughs> Otherwise, they complain. And that's just the staff who work next door at Tesco. <laughs> Mr. Contest Chair, ladies and gentlemen, now just by show of hands, does anybody actually use Holland Park Station in London? Raise your hand. Uh, oh, well, you're not a judge, are you? <laughs> disclaimer, disclaimer, hashtag not all customers. <laughs> but seriously speaking, how do you respond when confronted with somebody who genuinely believes that they were born with the right to be right? It was one November morning last year I was on the early shift, and I was sitting in that thing, the assistant's book. I don't know if you know it. That looks like uh, Doctor Who's TARDIS. <laughs> that's what we staff call it anyway, because that's where we carry out our time travel. <laughs> Reflecting on questions like, how did I get here? <laughs> and I promise, I promise you I was not reading the Racing Post. <laughs> corner of my eye, I spotted him walking to the station. His Majesty the customer. <laughs> Looking like a feudal lord inspecting the servants quarters. <laughs> now years have prepared me for this moment. Years of customer service brainwashing. I mean training. <laughs> and it didn't help that at the station manager who we call Jobsworth Ali <laughs> was sitting <laughs> Yeah. was sitting in the back office watching on the monitor to see how long it would take me to walk from the box to the customer and I had a target a performance target of 10 seconds so I quickly rushed out of the back. I was well trained you know <laughs> hello how can I help you he took one look at me as if I was a specimen <laughs> and pointed at the ticket machine. 12 pounds for a one day travel card? You must be taking us for a ride. <laughs> yesterday and I thought to myself that's a shame because if you were you would have traveled for free <laughs> for a split second we eyeballed each other and we shared a moment of connection I don't know if you know that connection that two male animals 
have when they meet for the first time. And they know, we're thinking the same question, aren't we? Can I beat you up? <laughs> but he said, come on, let me into the station. I said, why? You need a, an oyster card or a ticket to get through. He said, no, I don't need a card. I know everybody who works at this station. I know David, I know Isabel, I know Mohammed, and they all let me through. Up until this point, I had been working at Holland Park Station for three years. David I knew, Isabel I knew, who was Mohammed? <laughs> so I proceeded to tell him, sir, there's no Mohammed here. Let me have the wrong station. Have you ever tried to correct somebody and almost immediately thought to yourself, mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> Right before my very eyes, you seem to double in size. Up went the nose, out came the shoulders like a peacock's feather, down came the testosterone. <laughs> How dare you challenge me? If I say somebody works here, they work here. Who are you? I haven't even seen you work here before. Do you actually work at this station? And he spoke with such confidence that for a moment I started to doubt myself. <laughs> But another part of me said, no, 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 you don't have to take that from him. You're a Lagos boy, come on, give it back to him. I was about to let my speaking fly in his face. And at that moment, Jobsworth Ali came out of the office. What's going on here? And the customer looked at him and said, hello, Mohammed. <laughs> another customer walked through, and he just, the customer just went right through him without a ticket and went into the station. I turned to Ali, I said, what's going on here? Why did you let that happen? And is your name Mohammed? He said, no. Why didn't you correct me? I was so angry. I, you could probably see the steam coming out of my ears because he said, okay, let's go into the back office. We'll calm down. So I said, okay, oh, okay. Time for more brainwashing. <laughs> so I followed him. He said, calm down, sit down, sit down, calm down. Breathe in, breathe out, and go to your happy place. I said, I'm calm, I'm calm, I'm calm. I'm on a beach, drowning in injustice. <laughs> and he said, relax, 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 relax. Listen, look on the camera. Downstairs on the platform, there are ticket inspectors. Let them deal with him. But you, you have to let it go. Because nowadays, you're going to have confronted with alternative truths, fake news. People are going to call you all sorts of names that are not on your birth certificate. <laughs> and sometimes, you just have to let it go for your own mental health. Otherwise, you'll spend the rest of your life trying to state the stupidly obvious to the obviously stupid. <laughs> You've just won the humorous speech contest of District 91. How did you feel? Well, to be honest, I must confess, for the first time, I'm lost for words. I'm still in shock. <laughs> Pleasantly surprised, but lost for words. <laughs>